good afternoon. Welcome to our office hour webinar on leveraging leadership. Uh, I see quite a few people are joining us right now. So find that question box that's in your control panel. Open the question box and share with us where you're joining from today. Uh, we love to see where people are joining from. So you can find that question box by opening your control panel. That is that orange rectangle with the white arrow. And then at the bottom, you can simply type where you're joining from today. So today I am coming to you from uh, Louisiana, uh, where it's overcast, uh, kind of warm. We have a great day, it looks like. Oh, here we come. Um, we have Arizona, a little chilly in Chicago. Welcome. Oh, let's see. Hope is from Texas. Welcome. So glad you're here. So, so far we have uh, Arizona, Louisiana, Chicago, Texas. I know there's a Missouri in there I recognize. We have another Texas, welcome Melissa, so glad you're here. Uh, we have about two or three minutes before we get started, but feel free to open up that control panel, find the question box, share with us where you're joining from. I'm learning a lot about the weather from around the United States. We're so glad you're here today. We'll get started momentarily. Uh, a few more people have just joined us. If you have, find the question box that's in your control panel with that orange rectangle with the white arrow and share with us where you're joining from today. So we have Texas, we have Chicago, Arizona, Missouri, Louisiana. Uh, we have Florida. Welcome, Darcy. Looks like uh, Clark's from uh, New York. We have Georgia. Welcome. So glad you're here. We'll get started in about two minutes. We have a few people who have just jumped on the call with us as well. Find that question box in the control panel. We'd love to see where you're joining from today. We'd love to hear about things like your weather. I was telling the group earlier, it's a little overcast here in uh, Southern Louisiana. It's a little chilly in Chicago, we learned. Feels like fall in New York. Nice. Thanks for sharing. We'll get started in about one minute. All right. Oh, sunny and cooler in Florida. Nice. 80s in Texas. Nice. All right. Well, we are so glad you're here with us this afternoon. It is two o'clock. Uh, welcome, welcome to Leveraging Leadership. If you have not joined us for an office hour webinar here at Good Heart Wilcox, um, you may be in store for a surprise. You will need a smartphone or device to scan QR codes. We'll have some other interactive activities along the way. This session really relies on audience participation to be successful. So be ready to engage as we learn with and from each other. So with that said, let's get started. So you're going to scan the QR code or there will be a link in the chat momentarily. And you're going to define instructional leadership. So when you open up the Mentimeter, there will be a blank box where you can type in your response on how you define instructional leadership. Then once you enter your response, hit that submit button and we can start to learn with and from each other. 
So this tool we're using is called Mentimeter. We are using the free version. It has different response types, such as multiple choice, true, false, matching. Um, so let's click on the link and see what's going on in there. So when I open up the link, you'll see a few things. You should be waiting on some responses to start coming in. The answers will be auto-populated. That link is also in the chat if you want to click on the link so that you can type it in on your laptop. Let's see. I'm not seeing any responses come back. Let's see the next. Let's try that again. Sometimes technology is challenging. So here we go. We can scan the QR code with our question with our camera app. You can enter your response to what is instructional leadership? How do you define it? The link is also found in that chat box inside your control panel where you just typed in your question box location. So let's see how we define instructional leadership. Let's see if it's working now. Here we go. So how do we define instructional leadership? So we're looking at it as guidance with modeling for instructional best practice delivery, providing support and feedback to really improve those teaching practices. Uh, look at the vision and the goals of the school. Um, leading others in an educational setting, modeling best practices, implementing a vision for instruction and anything that aids instruction. So yeah, so we can start to pull out some key words from here, right? So we're seeing things like learning environments, learning experiences, instructional best practices, modeling. So we're seeing some of those themes starting to merge as we create or co-create our group definition of instructional leadership. So we're gonna be dealing with learning environments and experiences, modeling best practices, looking at teaching practices. Absolutely, guided strategies for learning. Absolutely, you're all on the right track. So let's talk about what we're going to do. So we've started to build our definition of instructional leadership. So we're going to define instructional leadership as a group, we're gonna co-create some definition. Then we're going to explore just four ideas on ways that we can leverage leadership in this academic setting. So my name is Mady Green. I am the manager of professional development and instructional design here at Goodhart Wilcox. Um, we are super excited to share with you these quick, fast paced, 30 minute uh, professional development webinars twice a month. So with that, let's keep going. So we started to develop our um, view of instructional leadership. And I forgot about this, but yes, don't forget, the recording will be sent to you uh, within 24 hours after this live event, which to the email that you use to register for the event. And then also in the handout section, you should find your certificate of attendance. That will also be emailed to you, but just in case, feel free to download it today to make sure you receive it. I was so excited to move on. I forgot about this slide, but here's some information. Now let's move on. So let's talk about empowering educators. Thinking about our ex uh, experience in the education setting, how do you empower educators? So once again, you're gonna scan a QR code, it's gonna take you to a Padlet, and you're just gonna share, how do you empower educators in your role? When we think about empowering educators, that could be things like, providing teachers with necessary resources, professional development, creating those positive classroom environments. We all know those educators, it's a difficult job. It's not always easy. So let's look at ways that we can empower educators and each other and those that we work with in our settings. So grab your smartphone, open the camera app, scan a QR code. It'll take you to Padlet. I'm using the free version of Padlet. If you're on your phone, You'll find a plus button at the bottom center of the screen. You can click the plus button to enter your response. If you're using the laptop version, I'll put the chat in the link. You can simply click on the plus sign at the bottom right. And that will allow you to enter your information on the Padlet. So the link is in the chat. The QR code is on the screen. 
let's look at ways that we can empower educators in our role. I'm gonna click on the QR code and we're gonna see what everyone's responses are looking like. <clears throat> so it looks like we might need to, my screen might be delayed just a second. So I'm gonna go back to the QR code so you can scan it. So what's cool about Padlet is it will let you know how many people are actually typing or working in the Padlet to share their ideas and experiences since we all have really great experiences to share. So scan that QR code, jump on that Padlet, and enter your response to the question, how do you empower educators? The link is also in the chat if you need it. So as I click on this, what's cool about Padlet is you'll notice that there's this little bug icon at the top. And this is letting me know people are working on the Padlet by adding answers, ideas, experiences. So how do you engage and uh, empower educators? So things like engaging lessons with rigorous application, making sure they have the resources they need, offering support when needed, giving positive feedback as often as possible, things like validating their ideas and experiences, allowing educators and teachers to be decision-making makers, excuse me. Those are all ways that we can empower educators, right? supporting their professional growth, listening to what they need, providing opportunities for discussion, uh, presenting uh, engaging tools that help students interact with their educational materials with each other, absolutely. Um, um, positive feedback with valid and relevant resources, supporting educators seeing and hearing them, right? So some of that active listening, making sure that they feel heard, um, you can empower educators by allowing them autonomy with certain frameworks to feel empowered to allow their own teaching pedagogy to shine through in the classroom. Absolutely. So these are some ways that we can empower educators. So hopefully this is an opportunity for you to share your experiences and then for others to learn from those experiences as we work to empower educators. Let's talk about another one. What about shared vision? So we talked about empowering our educators to make sure that they have the resources needed, the professional growth, that they feel seen, that they feel heard. But what about that shared vision or that shared decision-making even that was mentioned in the last one? I'm gonna put a link in the chat. You can also scan that QR code. That's going to be in the chat. Uh, sorry, the QR code's on the screen. The link is in the chat. Some days words are kind of hard. And you can share with us, what is key in creating that shared vision? You know, we, we read all this research about how school's mission and vision are essential elements of the school's or organization's culture. You know, it often happens that leaders kind of set their own goals and ideas. But what happens when you include staff in that crafting of your organizational mission or vision statement? How do we bring in stakeholders that will be personally invested in making our organization's goals a reality? You know, how are we creating those strong, positive, collaborative educational cultures? So you can scan the QR code, use the camera app on your smartphone, or you can click on that Mentimeter lap, um, link that's in that chat box for you and share with us anonymously, what is key in creating a shared vision? So you'll notice that all of these responses are um, anonymous today because we know that anonymity can also increase engagement. So another tool that we can use with our students and our staff when asking some difficult questions. So let's click on here and see what is key in creating those shared vision missions, even that shared decision making. What does that look like? So the things that are coming in, so what is key? Feedback is key. Also working with educators, you know, to solicit input from all, uh, creating that collective shared vision. <clears throat> There's also some comments about listening, being open, compromise, everyone's understanding and, and agree to disagree when necessary, right? It's like we all have these really valuable experiences that we bring to the table and how can we put all of those experiences together 
for the good of the whole organization. Some other things that are key to creating that shared vision is to be clear about the outcome and the results, right? What is the why? What is our why? Also those clear expectations along the way. So making sure everyone's informed, they know the direction, they're clear about the direction, they have the why, maybe the how and the what added in there. Looking at the value that's added, right? So what value are we adding by creating this, these decisions? getting that buy-in, making sure that people believe and are behind the vision, the mission that we've all co-created together. So we looked at some ways very briefly about really empowering educators that we work with. You know, and then we looked at some examples of um, shared vision. Let's see what's next. So what about this whole concept of leading by example? We've all heard this concept before of leading by example, modeling, et cetera. So what about engaging with those classroom observations, right? Whether you're in a K-12 setting, a college, a career institute setting, those observations can be stressful and tough sometimes. And sometimes that's maybe because of lack of transparency or communication. You know, there may be a gap in between the expectation of what the teacher should do and what they're actually doing, which could result in something like coaching. So as an instructional leader, there's an opportunity for coaching. Instructional leadership plays a vital role in the success of all of our organizations. We can also look at some things like data. Like, do we focus on the patterns in the data that could suggest possibly long-term strategies? How do we work together with the data? Do we pull in content experts for some of those core content areas or those CTE or health areas? Think about this also, what are the implications, implications for this that has on our instruction? What does the data look like with the instruction? How does data inform our instruction? Do we have any check for understandings along the way that we could put in place? not just in the classroom, but on the leadership side. You know, a big part of um, analysis is kind of crafting this shared system of norms and strategies in your organization, right? You can use coaching, you can use things like micro teaching to really encourage reflection as needed. So there's a book that's called Leverage Leadership and that author suggests a few ideas, like sharing video clips of master teachers in action. How would that help us lead as um, leaders, instructional leaders, right? How do we develop this system of norms and expectations so that every teacher can be comfortable, confident, and can implement our systems, right? So we can focus on instructional issues. We could use the coaching model. We can use data to inform this. You know, keeping with the micro teaching, <clears throat> and everyone knows, I think, that I really enjoy John Hattie's research on educational influences. Micro teaching actually has an effect size of 0.88, which is quite effective. So if we think that uh, 0.4 is the average effect size, micro teaching, so teaching in those small chunks, <clears throat> can double the effect size. Also, when we look at setting up our teachers to become confident, um, collaborative educators in the room, it leads to greater teacher credibility. And we know that teacher credibility has an effect size of 1.09. Also, there's this concept of collective teacher efficacy, right? The shared belief of a group um, of teachers that they have the skills necessary. So when our teachers feel that they are prepared to be in that classroom, that instructional environment, that collective teacher efficacy has an effect rate of 1.39. So if you think about the average effect size is 1.4, that's more than three times the average effect size is creating these teachers that believe they have the skills necessary to have a positive impact on student outcomes. So we can look at things like classroom observations, looking at data, micro teaching, that all help build teacher credibility and collective teacher efficacy, which have massive impacts on student outcomes of learning. So there's a, a few ideas that we found in research. What's the next one? What about celebrating achievements? So I know earlier you found that question box 
where you shared where you're joining from today. So find that question box again and share with us what is your favorite way to celebrate achievements and successes in this educational environment? I'll open up my question box so we can see some of the responses coming in. But what we know is regular acknowledgement and celebration of these accomplishments of students, staff, educators, instructors can really help our school uh, or organization. We know that these are positive impl implications of the recognition programs, success stories. You can celebrate everything from birthdays to academic or even instructional successes. Let's see what's coming in the question box to see how everyone in our audience today, all the participants, celebrate achievements. So we have things coming in like shout outs to larger groups, right? I've worked in a school organization where we had a shout out board and you could put the positive celebrations that happened all day long on a post-it note on the board and we could see all the great things happening over our school uh, over the course of the day, the week, the year. So find that question box, share with us, how do you celebrate achievements in the educational setting? I've also seen things at other schools where they had note cards that you can anonymously write a positive note, leave it in someone's mailbox at school. So people were constantly getting positive notes, positive reinforcements. Uh, there have been schools that have had like pizza Fridays or popcorn Fridays for the teachers. Um, yeah, we just had another one come in that says prizes, just because notes, um, praise in public, absolutely. Make great actions, achievements known and praise them out loud, absolutely. New teacher welcome kids, right? New teachers love to get swag from their new organization. We also have people celebrating achievement through soft shout outs, those post-it notes, the glow in the moment, a teacher highlight board, a student letters shouting out to the teachers. That's an interesting concept. So letting students celebrate the educators, uh, using teachers as an exemplar in a staff meeting um, around school meetings, a meeting school vision, values, et cetera. We have some with small gifts, note cards, um, with students can be like high fives, positive calls home, positive emails home. Uh, we have a few more coming in with um, uh, DECA students. They deliver planners and refreshments to teachers, especially during testing season. That's a great way for us um, CTE, um, CTSO advisors, uh, even if you have other school organizations that you're an advisor for, like Student Council, National Honor Society, those other groups to really help the students also give back to that community. They can provide ref refreshments for the teachers, especially during those times like testing. Those are great ways to share. So there's so many different ways that we can share our successes and our achievements with those around us. So realizing that this was, a, we're already 20 minutes into the session. These are fast and furious professional development sessions. Let's keep going. So what did we do today? So we looked at ways that we could empower educators. We shared and we learned with and from each other about ways we can empower educators. We also discussed how we can co-create those shared visions, everything from shared vision and shared mission to that shared decision making. We then looked at ways that we could lead as examples through professional development opportunities, making sure instructors have the resources they need. And finally, we looked at ways that we can celebrate successes and achievements of our organization and our students, right? So we looked at new teacher welcome kits. We looked at prizes. We looked at shout outs. We looked at things like self-care, like delivering refreshments to teachers during testing session, right? So there's lots of different ways that we can celebrate achievements. Now, if you've attended any of these before, you know there's always some great big reflection activity at the end of these professional development sessions. But surprise, today there's not. Today is gonna to have a moment for you to reflect without having to share your thoughts um, publicly or anonymously with all of us. So the question today is, what can you do as a great leader that will separate you from the rest? So thinking about some of our key takeaways, thinking about leveraging leadership and instructional leadership, 
What can you do that will separate you from the rest in your leadership um, role? So I'll give you just a moment. You can take 30 seconds to write down your response on some piece of paper or maybe on your phone. What can you do as a great leader that will separate you from the rest? So hopefully you have a moment to reflect and think about that. You can also take that question with you and think about it throughout your week. Post it to, put it on a sticky note, post it on your laptop or your monitor. But we can think about leveraging leadership. So as we start to wrap up, here are some things that we can also remember. Yes, at GW, we are a publishing company. So we love professional development, but we also like to help with all the resources that you might need for any of your program areas. So if you would like a free preview of any textbook, you can scan that QR code and that will take you to a site where you can request a preview of a textbook. So we have all, four, well, we have 14 career clusters covered plus health and PE. So you can find those there. You can also find them on our website at g-w.com. Also, if you like professional development and you want more of it, you can scan that QR code. It'll take you to our new PD site. There's a new video on the front center of our website. You can also sign up for that PD newsletter. So once a month, you'll receive a newsletter that has information about different webinars that we offer, different conferences that we'll be attending so that you can join our sessions live in person. And then we also have instructional strategy videos that we are adding to constantly. That just helps you create um, different instructional strategies in different uh, areas of your class. If you're like me, I feel like I use the same three instructional strategies forever. There's a million other ones. And so hopefully this will give you some ideas on how to use those in your class in the future. So with that, we have about five minutes left. I would love to answer any of your questions. You can put them in that question box that's in the control panel and that will take a few moments for questions. If you have any additional questions, feel free to email me. We do follow up with you to make sure you have all the needs and resources that you need to be successful. So feel free to send me an email, put that question in the question box. And with that, we're gonna say thanks for being with us today. We hope you have a great rest of your day and week. And we'll see you on Halloween at 2 p.m. Central, where we will talk about creating a culture of thinking. We're going to explore five different thinking routines that can help create a culture of thinking in your learning environment. So have a great week. You will receive an email within 24 hours that has a link to the video, as well as your certificate of attendance. Or you can download your certificate of attendance in the handout section. And we'll see you soon.